Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, you know, we're going to be talking, something you might hear quite a bit about is diversifying, right? You've heard before, like, you know, everyone talks about you should diversify, and then there's a handful of people that say you shouldn't diversify. Even if you thought you wanted to diversify, like, how would you go about doing it? Well, that's what we're going to go over, right? So I would say you need to diversify your portfolio in order to protect yourself in case of, say, like a market crash. But luckily, you know, diversifying your portfolio is really, it's really not that hard, right? Most people would rather save their money in a bank somewhere than invest. Mainly because, you know, there's a little bit of risk associated with investing. You know, you've heard those stories of people who invest their life savings and lose it all, right? You know, and I get that, right? Like, I used to dread the thought of, you know, earning money and then, you know, risking losing it by investing, right? Um, but that's really, you know... That was until I kind of understood, you know, some of the basics and stuff like that. And, you know, effective risk management techniques, you know, it really helps. And, and one of the big ones is diversification, right? Because I'm sure you've heard this term, right? And in finance, diversification refers to the process of assigning capital in a manner that decreases exposure to risk, right? So in simpler terms, making sure you aren't o overly invested in one area. So if that investment tanks, you don't lose all your money, right? So the rationale behind diversification is pretty simple, right? On average, investment portfolios composed of different kinds of investments yield higher returns and pose a lower risk compared to any individual investment within the portfolio, right? So in this article, you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, how to and why you should be diversifying your investment portfolio, right? Um, we're going to try to break it down in a couple of simple steps, right? Um, the first one I want to talk about is to ensure your portfolio has many different investments, right? So ETFs and mutual funds, index funds, all that stuff, right? Um, an effort, an effortless way to, you know, do this though, is by purchasing ETFs and index funds or mutual funds, right? Um, ETFs and mutual funds act as a basket of different stocks, giving you instant diversification, right? They trade differently, so you'll want to read about each in detail before buying them, but they're an excellent method to diversify without getting overly complicated, right? Um, index funds are, you know, just a great option because um, they're going to include stocks that mirror a specific index, right? So the S&P 500, right? Uh, your diversification may be a little more limited here, but it's still a good option to really consider, right? Because a properly diversified investment portfolio should include cash, stocks, bonds, uh, ETFs and mutual funds, right? Now, of course, that's my personal opinion, right? Don't take that as like, that's what it's got to be, right? So step uh, step two or the, the next thing to talk about is diversifying within individual types of investments, right? So you should pick investments with different rates of returns, right? This becomes more challenging when you're buying individual stocks since you'll want to invest a decent amount to make the cost of trading worth it. For example, you don't want to spend, say, a hundred bucks to buy one share of stock um, for, uh, let's say, two thousand, right? You should invest a more substantial chunk so you save money on fees. Because of this, many people end up with a handful of stocks in their portfolio, putting them at risk. So when investing in stocks, you know, um, don't concentrate on a single stock or a few stocks, but rather different stocks in different sectors. It's also essential to have stocks with mixed income, growth, market cap, among other metrics, right? When investing in things like bonds, consider bonds with different credit qualities, duration, and maturities. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is considering investments that have varying risk, right? Uh, you know, you should choose investments with various rates of return. Right? When diversifying your portfolio, pick different investments whose rate of return is different to ensure substantial gains for certain investments, offset losses in other investments. Right, uh, and A thing to remember, though, uh, is uh, the intention is to minimize risk. Right, You aren't restricted to, say, blue chip stocks only. Right, um, For instance, you could go foreign stocks, Right, because a good methodology to use here is to look at foreign stocks. 
Uh, stocks from other countries tend to perform a little differently and typically balance out a domestic heavy investment portfolio pretty good. You can also look at small cap or mid cap stocks, which are younger and more volatile. Uh, one of the last things or steps, you know, we really kind of want to talk about is rebalancing your portfolio regularly, right? Because contrary to popular belief, diversification isn't a one-time task. You should check your portfolio often and make changes accordingly when the risk level isn't consistent with your financial goals or strategy. Um, I would say, you know, rebalancing your portfolio at least about twice a year, right? Or um, there's services out there you can use, right? Um, uh, I think it's called uh, Bloom. Um, I think it's uh, B L O O O. I think it's three O's M, right? Uh, it's a 401k optimization tool that will make sure your 401k is always working for you. You can learn more about that, um, you know, just by Googling it and going into it. Or if you guys want, I can make a video going into it. Um, if you decide to go this way, uh, you've got a, um, you know, every now and again, they have these uh, special promotions. Um, say we're like, when you buy a year, you get X amount off, right? Um, I'm sure some financial websites will be able to give you a code for that. Um, I don't know how often they do it, but I'm sure they do it quite often. Um, so then what should you, uh, what should be in your portfolio? Well, a diversified portfolio should include, you know, a bunch of different things which we already talked about, but let's start from the top. So domestic stocks, right? Buying stocks gives you, you know, an opportunity to own a percentage of a company, which comes with benefits such as, you know, dividend payouts and capital gains when the stock increases in price over time. Domestic stocks should be a significant part of your investment portfolio, provided they're going to offer great opportunities for growth in the long term. The world's greatest investor, Warren Buffett, shows us exactly how to diversify when investing in domestic stocks. With his, uh, yeah, his top five uh, stocks being Apple, Wells Fargo, uh, Kraft Heinz, Bank of America, and Coca-Cola. The stocks represent different companies in different sectors, right? Um, another thing that should be in your portfolio is bonds, right? Because bonds offer regular interest income. They are less volatile than stocks, making them a good cushion during unpredictable movements in the stock market. Stocks should be a significant portion of a portfolio for an investor focused more on the safety of their investment than growth. It's worth noting, though, that bonds don't offer higher returns on stocks in the long term in most cases, but there are certain international bonds that provide higher yields. Another thing that should be in there is going to be short-term investments. Your portfolio should also include short-term certificates of deposits, or CDs, as well as money market funds, which offer stability as well as easy access to investments. Investments such as uh, CDs are insured and guaranteed by the uh, FDIC, making them safer. However, they aren't as liquid as money market funds. Another thing that should be in there is going to be international stocks. A good mix of international stocks is recommended to protect your portfolio against the local stock market, you know, ups and downs or shocks. Like, you know, one day crashes and it shoots back up and just, ooh. Stocks issued uh, by U.S. companies perform differently from those issued by non-U.S. companies since they have exposure to different opportunities in other parts of the world. Another thing is going to be sector funds. Just like the name suggests, sector funds are investment funds which focus on specific sectors or segments of the economy. Having sector funds as a part of your portfolio offers you unique investment opportunities in different economic cycles. Uh, another one is going to be real estate fund, right? Investment portfolios with real estate funds, which include um, REITs or real estate investment trust, offer protection against inflation. The funds also provide unique opportunities in real estate you wouldn't otherwise be able to take advantage of on your own. Another thing we can talk about is commodity focused funds. Equity funds that focus on commodities such as gas, minerals, oil, all that good stuff, right? Uh, it can really protect your portfolio against inflation. The funds also shield investors from the risk associated with commodities since commodity investing is, you know, it's recommendable uh, for seasoned investors only, you know. Um, asset allocation funds, right? So asset allocation funds come highly recommended if you're keen on diversifying, but you don't have the expertise or, say, the time to build a diversified portfolio yourself. 
Okay, well, you might be asking, why would I need to diversify my portfolio? Well, because it's going to reduce the uncertainty of investing, right? There's a level of uncertainty in every financial market. If you put all your money in stocks, you risk losing everything if the stock market crashes. The same applies to the real estate market, commodities markets, currencies, almost any other type of investment, right? However, all markets just about, you know, very hardly ever crash at the same time in the same manner, right? The same applies to investments in the same asset class. So, for instance, two stocks of different companies and different sectors fluctuate differently. By diversifying, which is just putting your money in various investments across different sectors, the probability of losing a significant amount of money or your entire investment is extremely low. So let's look at an example of diversification. A simple mix of investments is, say, about 55% U.S. stocks, 30% U.S. bonds, 10% foreign stocks, right, from developed companies, and 5%, um, say, just regular stocks, right, which, you know... Uh, would have resulted in an average loss of 27% during that uh, 2008 crash, right? Now, including international bonds, commodities, hedge funds, and REITs in the portfolio would have reduced the loss to 16% during the uh, 2008 crash, right? So, I mean, we're talking about a difference of 11%. It's pretty big, right? So by putting all your eggs in one basket, you're actually hurting yourself financially, Diversification will reduce risk and make your returns more stable over the long term. But it doesn't have to be complicated, right? So, you know, Warren Buffett has been on record stating that diversification is protection against ignorance, right? Making it unnecessary when you know precisely what you're doing. However, right, Warren Buffett is already a seasoned, wealthy investor, right? He spent decades just, you know, focused on his craft, right? Mastering his game of investing. And he's now equipped with investing resources and experience beyond, you know, that of the ordinary investor. So I would say, let's not listen to that advice, right? Or at least let's not listen to it until you become accustomed and seasoned in investing yourself. So when starting out, you know, I would encourage diversification, especially if you're like most people, you know, you're looking for better alternatives to saving money in the bank while still protecting your capital. Right, so hopefully you guys got some good information and you can decide for yourself if you want to diversify or not. Again, I really recommend you do. Um, you know, hopefully this shows you or gives you a little insight of how to do it and all that good stuff. Uh, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe, guys. Uh, like the video if you liked it. And until I see you guys in the next video, y'all be safe.